So welcome again to uh, this demo. Uh, I'm Mohammed Asada. I'm both affiliated with uh, Waseda University and Qatar University. Uh, this demo is about a robot called Hatsuki, which is a unique robot that embodies an anime character design. Uh, the uniqueness of robot, this, yes, the, the uniqueness of this robot is that it can convey various uh, anime-like expressions and interactions to users, and it also embodies uh, uh, anime character aesthetics and facial expression system. So as you can see, this is the initial design of Hatsuki, and our design process was based on outside-in design process. So we start from designing the external look, and then we go to design the internal mechanics of the robot. So we hired a, 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 a like an illustrator who did this illustration of Hatsuki, and uh, basically this, uh, this design is, uh, uh, applies proper propor body proportions, like head to body, proportions as well as hand legs that that are similar to anime characters uh, it also has uh, different uh, uh, like uh, accessories which uh, which are commonly found in, in a mecha musume design direction and mecha musume means that it combines a girl with a robotic uh, components so she's part robot part girl and she also has for example unique accessories like the mecha uh, Mimi, which is like ears that can move and express different things, as well as different accessories distributed throughout the body. So as you can see, Hatsuki uh, reflects the, uh, the aesthetic design that we have selected. And for example, uh, she embodies the Mecha Mosume, the body proportions that we've explained earlier. And she also uses the back of the head facial projection system that can project different facial like uh, expressions the similar uh, like to anime characters. And it also has a Mecha Musume, which is like uh, the ears uh, that can move depending on the uh, context of use. For example, when she's sad or she's happy or uh, similar to like uh, animals like horses or dogs <laughs> when they express themselves. So um, I'll talk a little bit about Husky's implementation. So we implemented first the facial expression system in the head here based on the back of the head projector. So there's a projector that uh, uh, processes uh, the facial projection like uh, pictures or video of Hatsuki's expressions and then it does um, uh, the projection on Hatsuki's face here with deformation, of course. Uh, this expression system is very, we believe it's, uh, it's very unique and it can enable conveying a variety of uh, expressions such as like realistic expressions such as happy, sad uh, and others and uh, similar to like a, a human beings, right? So, but the power of this system is that can go beyond this expression to express things that are unrealistic and comical such as, such as this that is commonly found in the anime and otaku culture to express different things uh, depending on the context. So this is a very rich uh, expression system that can be used for a variety of uh, expressions that span beyond what humans can express. Uh, in terms of uh, Hatsuki's implementation for her body, we, uh, her body is uh, 3D printed uh, you, you with PLA and then processed basically to uh, polished and then painted and then assembled as you can see. Uh, the uh, uh, mechanical structure of Hatsuki comprises uh, s uh, 17 degrees of freedom and they, they are distributed in the neck, the head and both arms. And uh, they also uh, comprise uh, industrial grade servo motors as well as uh, hobby servo motors. In terms of sensors, Hatsuki is equipped with a variety of sensors in her like servo motors such as torque sensors and uh, heat sensors, etc. But she, she's also equipped with, a, uh, we previously equipped her with a mic, now she has uh, only a speaker for example. And uh, we also equipped Husky with uh, uh, a real sense camera, previously a depth camera, so she can perceive the environment. And uh, we also equipped her with a stereoscopic camera that can be used for, for example, VR or like telexistence type of experience. So the experiences enabled by Husky are uh, basically uh, categorized under two main categories. First, uh, Husky as an autonomous uh, robot. Uh, and in this category, we expect Hussey to act autonomously without human intervention. Basically, uh, when she's somebody, she goes to greet him and talk to him without having a human operator to control her. So, for example, she'll be deployed in some, for example, event. She can go and shake people's hands. And she can say things to them, to greet them. Yeah, to something like that. 
she can also be like uh, be be programmed using like machine learning techniques or AI to uh, to convey different expressions and emotions and interactions at different contexts. So uh, this is about the the, uh, the the Husky as an autonomous robot. So while my partner prepares the VR system, I would like to elaborate more about the explored context of use of Husky. So to really explore how Husky can be used in different contexts, what we did we have done is. We have uh, deployed Husky at Wonder Festival uh, 2020, and we asked people how about their basic impressions of Husky at uh, different interaction contexts, and uh, they, they proposed a, a variety of use cases that we analyze and we uh, we uh, we provide a good uh, like uh, a co basic conclusion of the cate main categories of Husky's deployments. So, if you are interested about the potential uh, of using Husky as an autonomous robot. Uh, please check out the paper which has the categorization and uh, a list of these uh, use cases. Uh, I think my partner is ready now. We can demonstrate the VR system. So as you can see, uh, uh, Fonabashi-san is wearing the uh, uh, tracker and he's holding the uh, head, uh, like uh, the the uh, the joysticks, uh, HTC Vive joysticks. And as he moves his body and like head and uh, hands, the Husky follows. So this is like a tele-existence uh, master-slave system. So how this works is basically uh, we track uh, Funab uh, Funabashi-san's uh, body locations and then we transform those to, uh, through the inverse kinematic system and then we send the, ser like the angles to the servos themselves and then the robot follows. Uh, the power of this system is that uh, Funabashi-san can also speak and he can also uh, do uh, various uh, facial expressions. And uh, to really illustrate or show the power of this system, we hired a voice actress who has done uh, a small anime-inspired sketch with one of our team members. And with this, I would like to uh, wrap up this uh, demo segment and open the door for any questions or comments you have. And thank you very much. No, actually, we are very much interested in making the robot uh, walk around. Uh, but we are working with very strict uh, like uh, limitations, especially that we are doing outside in design. So we have to maintain the body uh, proportions and the sizes of the legs. So it's, it's very challenging from an engineering perspective to develop uh, proper and strong actuation methods that enable a robot of this size to walk around and uh, uh, basically, uh, yeah, walk around and carry the whole weight of the, of the, of the upper body. So we are looking into how can we uh, how can we achieve this, and it's definitely coming on the way, but it's taking some time. Yeah, it is very challenging, especially working with these small sizes. There are no like in, no like in the market there are no proper servo motors or uh, actuators that can actuate. Uh, that they have high torque and it's very small size. For example, if you look at the knee. It's very, very small. So to, to develop proper actuation methods, this is, this is an engineering robotics uh, challenge, basically. Yes, if we, if we want to embody an anime character, we have to, s to, to be strict about the body proportions. If we break these body proportions, she is no longer embodying an anime character. We can make small compromises, but it's not gonna look proper, especially for people who are familiar with this culture. They, they know if it's out of proportion. So, as you said, this is the main, probably the main challenge. Thank you very much, appreciate it. With respect to anime figures, such as Figma, that allow for interchangeable parts, is there any interest in eventually allowing for easy swappable parts? Well, actually, yes. Husky is modular. We can change any of her like parts, hands, uh, like chest, uh, legs. Everything is modular. She's designed so that she is customizable, actually, and easily maintainable. So uh, this is an important feature of Husky, and yeah. So we can change and customize whichever part we want, or improve, or yeah. Yeah, thi I think this feature is very important because characters like evolve and should be customizable in different events. Uh, 
such as New Year or to correspond to like uh, uh, Halloween or something. So we, we change the character to, uh, we, uh, the system has to be easily like uh, uh, modular so that we can, we can swap these parts and put other parts that are suitable for the performance or the events or the context of use that we want. So uh, this is a key factor in Husky's design. Yeah. Well, well, thank you very much. <laughs>